Hey guys and welcome back to the next part so called software design so in this case of software design we can do the design in two styles one as a function oriented design and second as a object oriented design so what actually we are going to do that we will discuss as part of our syllabus so let's focus on the first part syllabus the things we will see design principle means what is software design why there is need to go for the software design and if we are going to go for the software design what the things we need to follow as the software design principles then we will talk about model level concepts design notations and specifications and structure design methodology sdm and the next part is a verification and matrix second part we will talk about object oriented analysis and design their concept design notations specifications design methodology and uml diagram so if you see the syllabus we get clear cut idea that entire chapter is divided into two parts entire unit is divided into two parts first as a function oriented design and second as a object oriented design so simply to uh, at this moment just to make a clear difference function oriented means procedure oriented if you know the perfect process of any uh, system through which we are going to make an automation so the manual process that is a complete procedure oriented if you are aware about it we will go with an diagram called as a function oriented diagrams the function oriented diagrams are nothing but simply er diagrams data flow diagrams so in your syllabus we are going to focus on data flow diagrams and to draw the data flow diagrams we are going to see the different design notations and specifications and based on that we will perform the structure design methodology now we'll coming back to the second part of the chapter is object oriented design here each and everything we will treat as an object based on the characteristics of an object we will represent each and everything and one important part here is in case of object oriented approach we are going to take help of one more language that language is known as uml language which stands for unified modeling language so this uml language will help us to draw the basic different types of diagrams so nine types of diagrams are there like uh, uh, use case diagram object diagram class diagram etc so just the things what we captured as a requirement analysis process as a as a part of srs we will try to convert it into diagrams and to draw the diagrams we have these two different approaches as a function oriented and second as a object oriented design now first need try to understand why do we need software design so this is the things what we need so we build the design to better understand the system we are going to develop means as a part of srs requirements are with us specifications with us so whatever written there as a statement to make it more clear we need a design and this designing nothing but creating models and model modeling achieves us four aims the first aim is it help us to visualize a system as we want to be it allows us permit us to specify the structure or behavior of the system it gives us a template that guides us in constructing a system it documents the decisions we have made so this is the basic objectives behind the modeling and modeling means preparing the diagram so we build design of complex system because we cannot comprehend such a system in its uh, entirely so this entire system may not be visualized in a single step but if we go with the design steps we can able to visualize it this is one of the important thing why we need to go for the software design now what actually the software design means that is what we will discuss what is software design so it describes the desired features and operations in detail including screen layout business rules that is protocols process diagrams and other documentation the output of the design phase will describe the new system as a collection of modules or subsystems so srs part we will convert it into the diagrams the diagrams may be represent small modules or may be part of that module as a part of a subsystem so this design stage takes as its input to the requirements identified and approved the requirement document so design elements 
describes the desired software features in the detail and in generally it includes functional hierarchy diagrams screen layout diagrams tables of business rules business process diagrams and a complete entity relationship diagram with full data dictionary we will call it as what a software design so simply remember design just to prepare the various diagrams that is what software design to draw the diagram we may have a different different approach now next part uh, that we will discuss is what is the purpose of design so why we need to go for the design because after analysis we can directly go for the coding we can because the requirements are fixed one means uh, let's take a simple example suppose you are interacting with a civil engineer and you said that i want to have one bungalow and that civil engineer performed the analysis that the bungalow may be having two bedroom hall and kitchen requirements are fixed their bedroom size hall size everything is fixed their specification part is fixed so after this fixing they can start directly construction just imagine after requirement analysis phase the software engineer or oh, sorry that civil engineer has started actual the construction and while the construction is going on the designers they have said that no need to go for the design they have directly started the construction coding part so might be the case that after few interval after 2 1 th or 3 months the owner visiting that site and while visiting the site he finds some problems that there is no parking proper parking space sunlights are not coming directly like this so he want to elaborate these changes into its a final product so he is interacting with civil engineer now civil engineer has one option uh, means basically two option one is to accept the change and second is to say no i cannot accept the change if he says no i cannot accept the change means that owner will simply stop a payment now second part is if he accept to make a changes what he has to do whatever construction he has made so far he has to demolish it first and then he need to go for the new construction so it will put extra burden on time it will put extra burden on his budget so who is going to pay this definitely not civil engineer and definitely not owner so this type of problems may come in future to to side this or to overcome this type of problems the basic thing is after analysis they need to go for the design phase that is what the purpose of design phase i hope you, it is clear so now we are starting with actual syllabus so the design process is nothing but a procedure to prepare the model or to represent a of a system like a dummy if you go to a shop mobile shop and you ask the person i want to purchase a mobile he is showing you the original piece he is saying that the piece is boxed the pack is so he is showing you the demo if you go with the that demo piece if you like it and if you have finalized with that model then and then only he opens the box means that is nothing but preparing the dummy things similarly the basic purpose behind the design is whatever your final software will be have that will try to prepare with its uh, dummy parts so to go with this we have a two process means two parts we can have a top level design or we can have a logical design system design detailed designs so basic just like uh, let's take one more simple example of a civil construction bungalow you said so the bungalow can be just an a single entity one bedroom uh, sorry two bedroom hall and kitchen and how it looks front rear and this is actual image this is a, this part we are calling as a system design top level design and if you go for more details this is logical design where actually the kitchen will be master bedroom lounge dining bedroom lot this all the parts will be discussed as a part of logical design so design has two parts system design and detailed design now system design means simply remember the first diagram simply remember this first diagram system design top level design and this focus is on deciding which models are needed for the system and how the model should be interconnected like this bungalow how many models are there two bedrooms means bedroom two one kitchen one hall entry gate exit gate windows these are nothing but all the different different models 
now coming back to the next part called as what is the detailed design logical design this is internal design of the model and is decided in this part so basic on depending on the system design now we need to think on how there will be a route from one room to another room this is all the parts called as what logical design so this design can be a function oriented or object oriented so in function oriented design consists of model definitions with each model supporting functional abstractions wherein an object oriented design it represents data abstraction functional abstraction data abstraction that is what the major difference between function oriented and object oriented so i hope you are clear with system design detailed design now next while going for the designing whatever the choice is yours maybe function oriented or object oriented or maybe a combination of this what the things we need to take into consideration that design whatever you are going to build that design must be efficient and can be represented in its in a simplest way these are the two basic design principles now efficiency means what we can say it need to be arise due to the cost considerations if some resources are expensive it is desirable that the resources must be used efficiently like in case of computer system the resources are often considered for efficiency are processor time and memory so your software design should be efficient means in comparison to the processing time it requires must be less memory requirement must be less we will call it as what effectiveness that effectiveness is represented as a term so efficiency and second part as a simplicity most software uh, criteria is a simplicity for the software design because the maintenance cost in software testing we have discussed it so the maintenance of the software is quite expensive for mess intense design of the system is one of the most important factors if your design is simple definitely the maintenance will be so different that is what the major part that we need to take into considerations while we are working on the software design so there are the two things for the design principle first is efficiency second is simplicity now to achieve this efficiency and simplicity we are going to take place into the four parts called as what design principles so the first is problem partitioning and hierarchy second is abstraction third is modularity and fourth is bottom end top down and bottom up strategy approaches so let's focus on the first part called as what problem partition and, and hierarchy now what this problem partition and hierarchy means simply the thing is simply remember major problems or the large problems can be solved with the basic principle divide and conquer so whatever the bigger problem divide that part into small small part and concentrate one one small part complete that small part then go for the next part that is what we are calling problem partitioning and hierarchy second part is abstraction abstraction means hiding unnecessary details from the user sides or the 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 one who is going to use that product hide unnecessary details means suppose i am going to take a help of a rickshaw auto to travel from source to destination is it necessary for me to the name of that driver manufacturing year of that uh, auto no na my purpose is just to travel from source to destination so rest of the things are hidden from my side we will call that concept as an abstraction so two common abstraction mechanisms for software systems must be function of abstraction how it works what are the things it need requires it doesn't needs you have to just connect that two parts like bedroom to hall or kitchen to hall but how they are going to take place that is nothing not need to worry at this moment just show the path from one model to another model function abstraction second is data abstractions data abstractions how the actual values are going to get pass means what is the average of auto i don't know need to care na that is what data abstraction that is what the second principle third is modularity modularity means again the same is breaking up the something which is complex into a manageable pieces like it is shown in the diagrams if you concentrate if you want to complete this this is made up of this complete sheet is made up of small small modules so concentrate on one model try to connect that modules to build a complex system that concept we are calling as a modularity and next is 
break the something into the two parts means top to down or bottom to up how you are going to work start from the basic model reaching towards the top model bottom up or reverse case start with the top model and coming back towards the bottom that is bottom up strategies the choice is yours <clears throat> but bottom up approach is highly impossible sometimes or, or practically not possible start with top to down approach what we can use so this is what about the design principles so what we will do we'll take a pause here in next lecture we will start with module level concepts